himself getting patched by multiple cars, as I mentioned earlier on. So Nurov in a very precarious situation, but he often finds himself in these in these places. He doesn't qualify as well as he races. Only the up front, they are sp getting with Lee Aberdeen, Lee Aberdeen and Luca Verani. Not very far apart at all here. But we just want to see how Halle Alistair Haig deals with Marcello Kessler coming around the old hairpin. best decision they've ever made, just not having done that under the safety car, really. Yeah, they're taking their pit stop strategies from Ferrari lately or something that's going on. In turn one, just too much gas on them, too much feet on the loud pedal, and a he's dropped him all the way down the order, but Philip Hammer is eight out in front by an 8.91 seconds. Michael is a wall there, sir. Um, and it definitely doesn't want to be hitting that earlier on as well. Difficult, the understeer is in the dirty air through that final corner because it's such a long corner and you get dragged off into the grass very easily. He'll have the slipstream down towards the chicane. Peterson was briefly alongside, but that slipstream has saved him and kept him in third. Yeah, Verani now lost a little bit of time to Aberdeen, about half a second. Peterson is. Push more and fall and up ahead. He's got out of line. It's now Pike. Good have a go at Werrell. Don't push him off. He's in the championship fight. Jack Werrell chasing down Carl Jacklin. Further down, Rob Williams and Chris Barnes. Station will run outside line now, though, for the heavy braking zone. Around the outside goes the Audi R8. Look Whoa. how much Miller's caught back into play. Exactly. Miller's just such a He's touched on second and change. All of a sudden, Miller's back in play. to the back end of Phil Jocelyn. So there's been a lot of movers and shakers in this first two laps here for race. Uh, absolutely serious racing league. Everybody's a lot of fun. Yeah. It's all um, about the entertainment. So I hope tell. everybody is enjoying themselves out there in the chat. We know that Ron is at the enjoying himself oh, watching a Burger King machines off into the grass a little bit there. Is that really bunching up now? Everybody and welcome to Bathurst, the most visited 
location on the Radical Race Series in its long history. This season, it's round six for the second season of 2024. And it's there to take us to the halfway mark in what has been a mostly American calendar so far. It's myself, Ian O'Leary and James Parfit, along with you for the next hour and a bit as we take you through two races here tonight, as always, in the Radical Race Series. Looking forward to this one once again. And we saw great racing one week ago at Imola, I think it's fair to say. It was a surprise winner, I suppose uh, you can say. Jamie Bird doing very well to stay up there towards the front as well. Uh, and we had uh, a great time, I guess, at Imola at a circuit where sometimes overtaking is tricky. Sometimes it can be difficult around here and we're hoping for another two good races around a circuit that no one will be unfamiliar with. No, I think they all are aware what Belfast is. They've all been here before. They've all know about it. They all should be familiarised with this circuit. You know, 6.14 kilometres in length. There's a f lots of corners. You get down in through Quarry Bend and you're going to be behind the person right the way up until Forest Elbow. It's only literally going to be Conrad Strait where you're going to be making an overtake. I would have thought here today see the championship standings before we go any further and it starts of course with James Barry who once again extended his championship lead the last time around this is sync with two drop rounds included by the way John McCutcheon as a result has moved up to second ahead of Luke Maxwell who didn't have a great time at Imola Mike Booson is up to fourth ahead of Paul Clark who's inside the top five then it is George Gonzaga Sit place and the uh, new feature race winner, it was Graham Brown who took the win at Imola. He's now eighth. Simon Edwards still has one uh, drop round to benefit from, but it still wouldn't get him anywhere near the championship lead, really. He's ninth ahead of Jamie and G in tenth. Jeff Ritchie will be, uh, well, I'm not sure if he's going to be here or not. He might be celebrating after the football earlier. He's 11th at the moment. Head of Robert Woodward, then uh, Michael LeMay, and the lowest down of the feature race winners this season, Abdul Al Amri, who hasn't really been here very consistently since he won that second race at Rutskogen. Paul Crabb rounds out the top 15 with Phil Justin in 16th. Jamie Bird, who was back on his uh, good form again last week. He's 17th ahead of Seth Brown, then David Beasley, James Chapman, and then those who haven't really been at very many races so far this season, including Joseph Emmett, Sergio Dela Cruz, David Walter, Phil Glover, David Roston, Stuart Geddes and Alan Peterson, who for whatever reason has been given a point for one of the rounds, but uh, doesn't race for whatever reason in these uh, events, despite practising uh, fairly often. We're in the final minute of practice and I'm glad to see that we've got a few more drivers on the grid as well. We're up to 14 now as we head towards qualifying and maybe we'll have a few more by the time that that session actually starts. But uh, just less than a minute to go here in practice, and it's the big names again, Simon Edwards, John McCutcheon, in the opposite order, who are at the top of the practice standings, and we know just how strong they are around here. Yeah, they're, they're always... James his mic for the moment, so um, I'm, I'm sorry, sorry there. Sorry, I, I was uh, <laughs> right. trying to sort something out. Um, yeah, no, I think the... John McCutcheon to Simon Edwards, we know how strong they are, right? This is a continuation of a battle that's been looming for at least, what, two or three seasons, if not more. And they're always fighting. They're always going to be at the front. And, and I think at the end of the day, this is going to be no exceptions. Uh, we've, we've got 14 cars on the track at the moment. Uh, and I think the race in itself is going to be nice and close. I think we are going to end up with pockets. I think McCutcheon and Edwards... Maybe Busan, if he's on his on his day, can hang out with the top two. And then you're going to see LeMay, Brown, Barry, Seth Brown behind that, Paul Clark. Paul Clark's hard to uh, overtake. He's going to be even harder at bar first where there's no room to overtake apart from that Conrad straight. Uh, Graham Brown was just on our screen there as we exit the practice session and go into qualifying now. He was the feature race winner at Imola one week ago, of course, and that brings us up to... Two, what I'd describe as surprise winners. Mike Boosten, maybe you could count as a surprise, but he's got the speed to have probably won more races than he has in his life, to be honest with you. He's uh, got one. James Barry has got two. He's leading the championship, so I'm not going to go and call that a surprise. But Graham Brown and Abdul al have both managed it. I think the similarities, though, between Imola and Kogan are apparent when you're looking at those feature race wins. They're in the reverse grid races, of course, they of rely on the fact that it's difficult to overtake. And I... Unfortunately for those drivers who do seek out a lower-end top-ten finish in race one for a good 
starting position in race two and, and good speed as well to hang on because don't take anything away from those guys they are still quick and they can defend well as well which is what you need to win in race two now that seems more difficult around a circuit like Bathurst I think the thing is you're almost looking at this sometimes as the top 10 reverse is beneficial for the feature and the person up the front for the feature if he can escape at the front and get into this mountain section first he may be okay but then it's where do you position yourself going down this straightaway because at the end of the day it's a long straight they're going to close up quick and you're in that situation then when you turn around and go do i want to be in second going on to the final lap do i want to be in first it's really tough and i think that feature race itself you know for the people that are in 10 they've got 12 laps so if they could pick off a place per lap without being silly by the time they get to that sort of last few laps they could be right up the front so they've got to be a little bit patient and i think with barfus itself it is mainly the decision on the final lap we know luke maxwell is one of these that will try things on the final lap and has shown that sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't and but it is that lottery gamble i think of where you want to be do you want to be at the front do you want to be in that second place going on to like conrad i don't know I, I i still struggle to see a surprise winner today but do never know it sometimes can be surprisingly difficult to overtake around here at bathurst everyone talks about the raceability of this circuit also staying out of the walls as well of course but that is not made easy at all by the overtaking situation around here and even down towards the chase it, it can be tricky so we'll see how they all get on today in that respect but it's not always as easy as you might think there's certainly no chances over the top here this is the mountain section that Simon Edwards is on right now. They're getting as close to the walls as possible is the reward. And uh, Frew McPhillamy will go now over Skyline. He's reached the very height of the course. Now on the dip downwards. We're on the front left here, so we'll get very close at the dipper. Not so close through at some of the right-handers, of course, but you'll get an idea here as to the late apex through Forest Elbow, although he's really diving for an early one there. Kind of using gravity almost to help him down the hill here, making the exit slightly less important than it otherwise might be, and he'll be waking his way towards that final chicane and the end of the lap. Did notice today, by the way, that there were 11 minutes in qualifying, which means these guys might get a chance for four flying laps. Yeah, if they can. Uh, the thing with the way the qualifying system works here in iRacing is that they've only got to bump the wall once, they get a 0x, the qualifying lap is done. Then they go round again, and they do the same thing again. Again, they get a zero X. Again, they don't register a time. So they've got to make sure they're able to limit them zero X wall taps, especially going up through that mountain section. If they don't limit that, they're gonna be in trouble and then gonna struggle to get a lap in. So although it should be more straightforward, it is always tough. Is, uh, Simon Edwards and Jobber Kutzen set the pace then quarter of a second between the two of them at the top of the standings James Barry is about 20 seconds from the line right now but just making his way through the exit of the chase I would imagine or into the chase I should say uh, now so we'll see if he can get into third place maybe which I'd expect him to be he's not going to be first I wouldn't have thought with no purple sectors to his name unlike Edwards who's already got the second sector down purple let's see for James Barry it is a purple final sector actually but is it enough for Paul absolutely not it's going to be third place for him and he's only just ahead of the crowd there it's very much a defined top two emerging there in those in those standings for now yeah that it, that's the thing with this racetrack you're either in the 158s or you start getting down into that 159 area and you can see most of the grid, the bottom f from fourth downwards, are in that 159. Phil Glover struggling a little bit on a 202. So Simon Edwards, McCutcheon and Barry into the 158. You've got to... The way you get your 158 is not doing 
this part of the race circuit. It's not the beginning part of the race circuit. It's not the end part of the race circuit. It is up through the mountain, through the dipper, down through Skyline and the S's. And it's there you've got to go in with little fear that you're hoping that car will stick. And so many times we've seen people where they go into that section, the car doesn't stick and they end up going into the barrier. That is the thing that these guys have got to contend with. We've got a little bit of a helmet cam on, but we might boost some over his left ear here. And it's just the way it all comes up very thick and fast through here. It's go, 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 go. It's There's no time. There's no rest for the wicked. It is constant all the the way through and especially when you start coming into here now you and you straight line it in you've got to be brave this is where you're losing temps or you're gaining temps through this section alone before you get yeah ooh, before you get out of forest elbow uh, I, I, I ooed because i thought he'd maybe grab the wall there at the dipper but uh, it was just the way the car was sliding through because it sort of did it again at forest elbow and he wasn't quite as close to the wall that time so uh, anyway, Busson hasn't got a time on the board yet, as far as I can tell, and he is uh, very deep into the session now for someone who hasn't got a time on the board. Now, the previous one wasn't invalidated because I saw him cross the line. He didn't have a time next to his name, which suggests that he was on an outlap, but uh, not sure, to be honest. We'll see if he's finally got it right this time around. He is doing some yellow sectors which suggests he's going slower than a previous best which does suggest that he's been trying to do laps in the past but has invalidate them maybe we'll uh, find out as he goes over the line now uh, into seventh place that feels like a bit of a banker but Unfortunately, he hasn't really got time for that. He's only got one more flying lap, and he's just started it now. Yeah, well, I've got him registered as an off-track for his first lap. So that could be why he's got sector times coming up and, and in a comparison. But it could also mean that he invalidated the first lap he's done. So this would be a technically his second one. And now he's got to get this one right. This is the full ball, live or die, you're either going to start in seventh or you're going to be up in the top four. Because you're right, that lap was a banker lap. It was literally to make sure he got a lap in. And that's what he needed to do for himself. But it's now this lap that he's got to go. He, and he's got to go in a way where there's just no fear, nothing. It's all or nothing. As James Barry's coming down the Conrad now. And he's got a couple of greens and purple in his name as well. Uh, good lap here for James Barry by the looks of things. Might be able to get onto the inside of the second row at least, but he needs to find half a second to even get on the front row. He's uh, nearly eight temps behind Simon Edwards, who's clearly got this circuit absolutely hooked up, and he can't seem to do anything wrong at the moment in this the car track combination. Out through the line for James Barry, who's had his purple sector stolen off him during this lap, and he only oh. goes up to third place as a result. Graham Brown, 77 thousandths behind him for the moment. Here's John McCutson. Simon Edwards has gone to the pit lane because there's nothing more that he can do. In fact, this is his teammate, Mike Boosen, I should say. They're both in the same team livery. Uh, there is Boosen through in seventh position. Then it's Phil Jocelyn, but just behind that, it's John McCutson looking to take pole, which Simon Edwards is helpless to stop at this moment. Yeah, you're not going to get... I don't think anybody's going to get near Edwards. McCutcheon's trying, mind you. Busson's not going to get a lap in, so he's going to be done after this. I think Graham Brown, maybe, uh, sorry, James Barry might get one in. Busson's going to come over the line, 158.7. as an improvement for him, but he goes up one place into sixth. He won't get a lap in. Graham Brown's sitting at the moment, coming into the chase. He is got some greens on the board as Brown. Owens Brown, so he, he might make an improvement. Phil Jocelyn is going to come over the line in front. Goes 2 minutes 6-4-4. Four, four. No position improvement, but it's going to be Graham Brown over the line now. The last one that should get their next lap in might be just James Barry, but I've got a funny feeling that's Phil Glover. He didn't impede him, so Barry's got about a minute, 50 seconds to get to the end of the lap. Paul LeMay is coming over the line right now to try and improve his position from dead last at the moment. This has not been a good qualifying session for LeMay, who has been on pole in this series in the past, but that's more like it, much more like it from him. Third place for Paul LeMay. Now, can anybody behind get 
onto that row with him, maybe. Jamie Bird, who goes over the line. That won't be uh, much of an improvement for him, but he does gain one place up to ninth. Then it's James Barry who will cross the line with mere seconds remaining. And um, it is not an improvement. No. James Barry can't go any quicker, I'm afraid. And so that will be the session as the seconds tick by. It's a late lap time from Paul LeMay that is the story because the top two were settled and had set their times from very early on in that 11-minute qualifying session. It will be six-time champion Simon Edwards on pole ahead of John McCutcheon with Paul LeMay and James Barry on row two. Graham Brown, last week's winner, and Paul Crabb will be next ahead of Mike Booston and Paul Clark. Then Jamie Verdon and Seth Brown to round out the top ten. Phil Justin, Damian G, uh, followed by... Phil Glover and James Chapman, who didn't set a time. Hopefully, he will race. Going to be interesting to see what happens between Edwards and McCutcheon here because the first race at Bathurst can sometimes be a stalemate between those two. Yeah, they're going to be swapping positions all the way through. Good evening, Phil, by the way, and good evening, Mr. Luke Maxwell. Good luck tonight all. Where are you tonight, Luke? Where have you, um, where have you disappeared off to this evening? Are you off to see your next Taylor Swift concert, dear sir? You never know. You and he might be a Swifty fan. No. Is, is he a Taylor Swift fan? I have no idea. To be honest, John McCutcheon started, started the rumour when he was away the other week and and it now it discovered that Luke Maxwell is a Swifty fan. So, huh, no idea. Okay. I'm not, so, I'm not sure, dude. I'm not sure. Interesting information. I know. There we go. Thanks. Uh, I, I, Robert Woodward is not here today, by the way, either. Apparently his toes hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, Did, yeah. I don't know whether he was joking. He oh. might be joking. To be oh, fair. okay. But uh, in a weird way, I don't, I don't necessarily uh, <laughs> believe him. <laughs> but uh, but maybe you won't be pleased for me not believing him. Anyway, uh, it's time to focus on the ones who are here indeed. Simon Edwards and John McCutson on the front row as the lights go out here at Bathurst. The first race is underway and it's up to the front two who get off to the best possible start. Paul LeMay is on the inside then of James Barry in towards turn number one. That's the first story in the battle for third place. Barry, the championship leader, will just tuck in to the blue, red and white radical just up in front of him and look to maybe take him on the way in towards turn two. The banked right-hander where you really do need to be on the inside. That's exactly where James Barry is. It's also where race leader Simon Edwards is and that's where he'll retain the lead from going through turn two with their championship leader, James Barry, chasing them from behind. Yeah, great start from Simon Edwards and John McCutcheon and they escaped as they were expected to. Barry got off to a nice start there. Edwards looks like he's made a bit of a mistake. Oh, Clark. Yeah, Paul Clark as well. James Chapman has also been off the side of the circuit early on. He's had to jump straight back to the pits. Paul Clark all the way down in 11th at this moment in time. But some interesting position gains. Down three for Clark, up one everybody else. And we're the first time through the S's and down through Skyline. We've uh, a long way to go in this race. Seven laps around this circuit, and then we'll be into a, a 12 lap feature race later on tonight, by the way. But yeah, unfortunately, not a great start for Paul Clark, who's the real story here on the first corner, or the first lap, I should say. Three positions lost, and a hurt tyre squeal down the back of the field when we were watching the two leaders fight it out between themselves into the cutting for the first time. Speaking of which, one comrade straight for the first time now and Simon Edwards is weaving around like it's the final lap. John McCutcheon gaining on him much in the way that Edwards does to his opponents. Here goes McCutcheon. Has he got off the road here into the grass? No, not quite. He's kept it on the road, but no! He breaks too late and Simon Edwards goes straight back through again. Here comes James Parry as well. He'll go up to second position now ahead of John McCutcheon who makes a grave error down into the chase. Yeah, he got the move done. That was the problem. He got the move done, couldn't get the car stopped. So it really was a catch-22 there. And unfortunately, there's going to be more opportunities. I don't think the Scotsman needs to rush this. He's going to be probably sat in his car. He's going to be a little bit wound up. He's going to be a little bit angry. And at the end of the day, he made a mistake. Live with it. Get on with it. And that's what he's got to do. Paul LeMay now having a go at him, coming down straight away through the mountain, straight into Quarry. LeMay on the out side but Cutchison on the inside is McCutcheon gonna be able to hold it he is kind of as they're still too wide going up into the cone 
Oh, it's going to be outside for the Kuing as well. They'll be, oh, he's so close to the wall. And he's broken too late again. And he slides through the turn. Here goes Paul Crabb, maybe. On the left-hand side. Goodness me, this will be brave into Reed Park. And he backs off just about. And probably the smart thing to do there as well. Because that could have got very nasty between the two of them very quickly as well. But uh, John McCutcheon is not having a good start for this race. From challenging for the lead to down to fourth place and was even struggling to hold on to that position for a brief moment there. Yeah, he, he's not had a good start, he's not had a good start, but we can't count him out. We, we never do, we never should, because he's got the Conrad straight to help him. He, if he can clear LeMay, I think maybe he might just... Oh, Paul. oh no! LeMay! Oh. And it's carnage behind at the forest elbow. Unfortunately, I think he's gotten away with it in terms of damage, but mccutcheon has been slowed, and if he's got damage to the front end of that car, then he'll be in big trouble. Here goes Graham Brown on the inside line. Seth Brown trying to go the other side. It's free wide on the way towards the chase here at Bathurst. Graham Brown doesn't have the straight line speed to compete here. Mike Boosen's under a lot of pressure. Jamie Bird's on the grass. I've no idea how he pulls it up in time, but he does. Oh. And they all make contact. John McCutcheon goes around after contact with his teammate and he's gone to the back. Oh no, that would be the slightest bit of contact between him and Mike. There's Seth Brown got two positions in one go, mind you. So a stellar jump from him. Jace Barry's just set the fastest lap on a 159.060. And John McCutcheon, John McCutcheon, what did you do, dear sir? And it was literally coming into the chase. It's going to be a minimalist. Stick. He just goes in too hot. He tags the back end of Mike Boosan. And unfortunately for him, around he goes. Not Mike's fault, I, I would suggest. I think John McCutcheon thought he was clear, actually, and thought he could just slot into line there, but he couldn't. And that was uh, not good news at all, I'm afraid. He goes around and into the grass at the chase. That leaves the two out front, Simon Edwards and James Barrier, but they're not fighting like these guys are. This is entertaining stuff now for third place. The big question for me in the rest of this race as well is, can John McCutcheon get into the top ten? If he can, then surely he's going to be odds on to win the second race. Yeah, he can, but he's got a, he's got a bit of a catch-up on Damien G at the moment. You know, G's, what, four and a half seconds up the road? So... It's an ask, and he's only got four laps, but I suppose when you're nearly hitting the two-minute lap, you've got quite a lot of time. Seth Brown got that all wrong, and he lost a bunch of time to Mike Busson in front. Busson's just got a hook up Forrest Elbow. Graham Brown's going to be in behind him here. This is going to be a battle of the Browns as they go down Conrad Strait. I don't think Seth is quite close enough. He's picking up some of the draft, but you can see the difference in closure times between Graham Brown and Seth over Mike as compared to Graham over Seth. It's uh, board now with Graham Brown on the way towards the chase. It's changing the background there as LeMay got back past uh, Paul Clark there, by the way. And forget that LeMay was the one who kicked all this off by spinning around at <laughs> Forest Over. Not sure really what he did. Did he clip the inside wall, maybe? Which uh, sticks out a little bit of that corner. He's got a bit of damage to his uh, left, uh, sorry, right side here is Graham Brown. So uh, sorry, it's Paul Clark, isn't it? They're in a very similar livery these days. Don't like that very much. Anyway, oh. um, yeah, well, that's all about as uh, he pulls gone. in and out of existence slightly there. Oh, there he's back to him. There he is. Pulled off. He disappeared for a straight. Oh, and he's got a... Oh. And, and again. Oh. Yeah, he's having problems. Yeah, well, stay off Paul for a minute because I, I don't really fancy that, that just crashing on us. Um, leaders up front. Some interesting developments. Barry's now within four tenths. He's going to have to push the limits. <laughs> The interesting thing is, what has Simon got on his car? What setup has he got? It, he can't quite run a skinny wing because he needs some grip going down through the, the skyline, down through the S's. But he isn't going to want to run a full wing because of the skyline. So I'd be interested to know what he's rocking in that SR10 at this moment in time. Oh, oh. oh Barry that's gets a that. That's mistake. Yeah, that's that done for a minute. As we'll jump back to the battle that is looming between the Browns with the Bird and LeBay. It's not really involving Mike Boosan anymore, although he's not quite away fully just yet. He is nearly there in third place. Then it's Seth Brown, Graham Brown, Jamie Bird, Paul LeMay. 
all in the group. John McCutcheon now just one second away from Damien G and that uh, elusive 10th place, which he really does need. Meanwhile, here comes Graham Brown on Seth Brown in towards the chase. He's on the inside for the right-hander and he's done the right hit. He'll be on the inside for the second part. If he can stay there and he is, Jamie Bird, meanwhile, breaks far too late, far, far too late, and he will drop places behind Paul LeMay as the battle continues between Seth and Graham Brown. Here goes Paul LeMay. Oh, he's almost had no choice but to go up the inside there. Broke too late himself as Seth Brown is forced wide by the looks of that. Graham Brown goes through. Seth Brown will be shuffled on backwards here as down the inside goes Paul LeMay. Through he'll go as well. That was all very awkward, I'm afraid to say down at the final corner and Seth Brown loses two places on that lap. Yeah, now we've got Paul Clark here. He's going to go at Jamie B B uh, Jamie Bird. Is he going to look at take the that inside? He's a little bit too far back. He just doesn't look like he's got the pace on the straight. But then he wasn't really in the draft. I would have seen him. I would have loved to have seen Paul tuck in right behind him. So he's getting that nose to tail drag, and he wasn't quite getting that. He was just out on the right hand side, which kind of just gave him half of it, if that makes sense, and not a full power of it. So it would. Been nice to see Paul slot in, but let's see what Bird can do. Ooh. Ooh. That is why that walls, them walls are horrendous. I don't know if you've ever driven by a first ear, you in, but it is oh terrible. I don't think I have an RA sim, but I certainly have on other sims, many laps indeed, and it's uh, very tricky to stay out of the walls, but it's the way that you go quickly around here. It's what makes the challenge so great at this iconic venue. We visit almost every season in the Radical Race Series. Meanwhile, that is a big lockup. I think it was from LeMay initially, but the big one uh, afterwards was from Seth Brown, who's now going to be Amy Bird's prey, I think, here. They go up Comrade straight up over the crest of the hill. This should be a fairly easy overtake for Jamie Bird, although as soon as he pulls alongside, he's struggling to get this one done. Through the kink they go. Seth Brown's still alongside, but he breaks earlier. And Jamie Bird will get the place. He skates into the turn and he holds it. Although Seth Brown right on the back of him again here. Towards the final turn, he's right alongside him indeed as well. Had to pick the outside. He breaks earlier into the final corner. Can he get the exit? Well, that curve was kind of in the way. And Jamie Bird broke exactly as uh, early slash late as he needed to there. And so hung on to another position. Penultimate lap then. John McCutson's up to the 10th position just behind Phil Justin. Battle's still going up for fourth place here. Yeah, they're still trying. You're going to see very, very shortly over the four. If he's going to, is he going to get there? There he is. As uh, Paul LeMay does clear Graham Brown. What about Jamie Bird? He's going to hang on from Seth Brown and Paul Clark. John McCutcheon just cleared Phil Jocelyn. That puts him in ninth. I wouldn't want to go any further if I was John. Sit on the front row. Uh, it benefit you more than being a, a, two rows back, to be blatantly honest. So for him, I would just sit there. But that's just me. I'm, I'm not a racer by any shape or form on the imagination, especially not on a road circuit. So, But I think John's where he needs to be. He got that front row. That's important. Yes, this has not gone to plan, race one, at all for him. You can guarantee he did not want to be in this position. But he is. He's now got to suck it up and he's got to make the most of race two. I think, uh, oh, it's Clark got through on Bird. How's he managed that over the top of the hill? Entirely sure why they've switched places, but they have done. And so that's Paul Clark up to sixth place. Oh, yeah, I, I think Paul that... Clark got two. Oh. He got two. Seth got uh, both oh, of dear. them on top. Wow, that's a big save from both of them. The fact that neither of them has spun around or crashed there is quite remarkable and Paul Clark will take both of those places very gladly indeed look at this over the top of McPhillamy I guess once the guy in front of you stops going off then you're inclined to follow him yeah it, it's kind of tunnel vision which it's a weird thing because you don't know why you do it but you do do it and I have done it I followed a car off a racetrack because I, I was just so close I lost where I was it's so strange. It's like the commentator's curse. We don't know why it's there. We just know it happens. To some, but to well, uh, to uh, ask people who drive, obviously, and go, go and follow a car off the yeah. side of the circuit. <laughs> Robert Goodson is uh, the 
one at the back of the field here, by the way. I actually think he's going to try and get his way through the field as much as he can here, because I think he'll still have the confidence. Now, since he'll be ahead of Edwards and Barry, almost no matter what happens here in this second race when the grid is reversed, I think he'll just go for these positions. So if to say, well, it's probably worth it because the others, my main rivals, what he will perceive to be his main rivals for this race will be behind him anyway, whether he starts this race, second race, fifth or second which is probably the options he's got here. He would currently start in second place. If he was to overtake all of them and get up to sixth place, he would start fifth or the second race of the evening. Let's see what he does here as they go over the top of the hill. There's the peak of the racetrack through McPhillamy now where both Brown and Bird went off the road and were lucky not to have big air accidents actually. Now into the dipper for the final time. McCutcheon will eye up his final overtakes here as James Barry will be doing for the lead. Yeah, he's going to try. I don't think he's close enough. Um, Edwards is obviously trying to break the draft as, as much as he possibly can. Barry's going to have to be late on the brakes or Edwards going to have to make a mistake. Saying that, it does look like Barry might have got a bit of a better run out of the chase. He did, but is he brave enough to send it up the inside? He's probably not going to. So there we go. Simon Edwards will be a sprint race winner again. He takes it ahead of James Barry. What's going on behind? John McCutson is ahead of Jamie Bird, but that's the only position he's been able to get here, though Seth Brown has gotten past Paul Clark. What about this into the final corner? John McCutson looks up the inside. Is he going to go for the cutback and the run to the line? Well, the finish line is very soon after the final corner, and so he can't quite get there. Clark hangs on ahead of McCutson and Bird, who set a personal best on that last lap as did Seth Brown on that sixth position. There is Phil Glover over the line, followed by Paul Crabb, who I think went to the pit lane during that race and so has finished last. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure what happened to Paul. As you say, yeah, he did enter into the pits, but I can't see anything happening to him. Um, so, yeah, I'm a, I'm a little bit unsure on that one, but there are the results from Heat 1. Yes, it is Simon Edwards just ahead of James Barry and a big gap created behind with Mike Booster leading the charge on the podium. Paul LeMay and Graham Brown battled to the line and finished fourth and fifth. Seth Brown got up to sixth on that last lap ahead of Paul Clark, John Kutchen and Jamie Bird. Phil Justin will be on the reverse grid pole with Damien G. Phil Glover. Uh, uh, dear, 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 uh, hello, Teeth. Uh, Paul you, you, you. Crab getting 13th <laughs> place in the... And they all finished alone. James Chapman, uh, he said he'd make his way out onto the circuit. I actually didn't see him on there at all, but he certainly didn't even complete one lap. No, I, he jumped straight back to the pits. He, had, he crashed and then jumped straight back to the pits. So I'm not entirely sure what happened with him. Hopefully we'll see him back in the second race. Wonder what we are going to see in the second race because the top two were comfortably ahead of the rest in the sprint race. If that form were to have continued, by the way, the two of them would have been... Uh, on average, and I know motorsports doesn't quite work like that, but on average, about half a minute ahead of the rest of the field. Now, that's probably unrealistic because John McCutcheon's very quick and he ran into trouble that race. But to say that McCutcheon may well be the favourite for a feature race win for the first time this season here tonight. Yeah, I think um, John's got a great opportunity. Unbelievable. He'll make up points he, well, technically, he should make up points. But, you know, this is the, the thing. It's how the, he, he can't make the same mistake he's done. If he's going to go for an overtake, he's got to make sure he gets it right. And he cannot make that same mistake because that mistake cost him so dearly. He then pushed like a trooper and he then made another one. And that's the problem. We'll uh, see how the second race goes. 12 laps ahead of us here at Mount Panorama. We're just in warm-up at the moment, by the way, before we get into the starting grid. That was a lot of smoke at Forest Elbow. Uh, some of the action was kicked off in that first race. It was uh, Paul LeMay who put around at that corner in front of the field and sort of created the situation that we saw for many of the drivers in the second half of the field. What are we going to see in this second race? Well, it will be Phil Justin and Jamie Bird on the front row together, ahead of John McCutcheon. Uh, who will probably be favourite from third ahead of Paul Clark. Then it'll be Seth Brown and Graham Brown sharing a all brown row three. Paul LeMay and Mike Booson will be next ahead of James Barry and Simon Edwards to round out your top ten. Then those that finished outside of it, Jamie and G, Phil Glover, 
Paul Crabb and James Chapman, the 14 drivers on the grid here tonight. Notably less than what we saw last week, actually, which is a bit of a shame because uh, Imola was a great event. But we can't have 20 every week by any means. We've got 14 and, uh, well, maybe only 13 with Chapman uh, not attending. The lights look like they're going to come on then ahead of 12 laps of racing. It's the second race at Bathurst in the Radical Race Series. And we are underway. Good start in the background there uh, from Boosom as he tries to make his way forward, but it's level between the front two into turn one. Phil Jocelyn oh. goes around. He was on the pole position for that race and has unfortunately thrown it away immediately as he drops it out of the first corner. That leaves Jamie Bird slightly exposed here as John McCutcheson gets up past Paul Clark. Love a look into turn two. Although it will be outside line and the long way round as Jamie Bird gets to the lead. He'll try to hang on here, but it's John McCutcheon already up to second place. Yeah, he, he had to do that. He had to, had to, had to move up through the grid. It was unfortunate for Phil Jocelyn. That was just completely a mistake. But it was more important for McCutcheon to get past Clark. You know, we know how hard it is with Paul Clark. You want to clear him on the first lap if you can. No offence to Paul. He is just tough to overtake. And it was vitally important for McCutcheon to do that and he did do that and now it's him and Jamie Bird. Bird on his day can be quick but can he be as quick as as quick as McCutcheon? Oh, oh, indeed quick enough to hold him back that's the key thing I think here is he quick enough to hold McCutcheon back and already you can see those different lines being taken between the two. Similar through Forest Elbow though but just maybe a, a bit of getting to the power earlier for McCutcheon or Maybe that's not really necessary. He's so close anyway that he might well draft his way past immediately. Jamie Bird showing that he wants to stay on the right-hand side and so stays there from very early on. But McCutcheon gets through straight away and he will be leading. Now the question will be, can he hang on as Edwards gets past Booster? Not been a bad start for the race one winner up four positions for the six-time champion. Yeah, another one that had to make that good start. He knew where McCutcheon was going to be and he knew how important it was going to be for him to get past. James Barry is going to be another one. He's going to want to clear Mike Busson as physically possible because he knows that they're in front. So the longer he leaves it, the harder it's going to be. Mike's not going to be a pushover. Simon Edwards is not going to be a pushover. Graham Brown, Seth Brown, they're all quick in front of so it is going to be a tough for him to get much further on than in the race that he can already. We go with uh, Jamie Bird and Paul Clark as they all try and give chase to John McCutson here. Clark on the outside line is going to struggle, but he's doing a very good job through turn two. Squeezes Bird as much as he humanly could have done and then takes the position when he can. Here goes Seth Brown as well on the inside line into the cutting and they make it work. The two of them run side by side and they still make it work just about without contact. Brown on the outside again and Bird will succeed from that inside position at Reed Park but that was fantastic racing between the two of them to go side by side through the cutting and prevail like that was fantastic as Edwards is now the one sitting in wait. He's up to fifth place. Yeah, he's now coming into the group, isn't he? This Seth Brown, this Jamie Bird group. He's still got Graham Brown behind him. He's still got James Barry, who's cleared Busson on the run up into Quarry Bend. So he's got that job done, and he needs to now look at making moves. Graham Brown's going to help him out by making a mistake. That's going to bring James Barry right on to Graham Brown. He is going to be sat there at the moment looking for James Barry. There he goes. He's going to go through. Jobs are going and the job's done and I think you'll see Barry there on the left hand side as he is going to be going past Graham Brown as they come into the right hander is he going to make the inside work going into the chase Graham doesn't really put up a fight jobs are good oh dear oh no and the contact as Graham Brown hits Jamie Bird it was all going on ahead of us there between Bird and I think it was Seth Brown uh, no oh, excuse God. me it was Clark, yeah, it's, those two liveries still confusing me. There's Bird, he just goes for a spin. Oh, he's, he's hit Clark on the way through. And Graham Brown couldn't avoid him either. No, nowhere to go, unfortunately, for Graham Brown. And that is probably going to be their races over. It's fortunate enough for Simon Edwards and James Barry. Barry's going to clear Clark. Is Edwards going to clear Brown? That's put boots on Bird and Brown all into the pit lane.
Yep. And Brown couldn't even drive back. He is out of the race, although Putin and Bird did drive back and uh, got back, so they may be able to continue. Not sure what happened to Boosin in all of that, to be honest with you. I didn't see him get any damage, but he's on his way out again now. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure. What? He, he went off. Oh, he's gone into the... Oh, he has oh he's put... missing his front end. Well, it's wavy. Yeah, well, he is missing it now. Yeah, it's gone. Um, but let's have a look and see if we can catch up where, how Boosin ended up in all of this yeah, so, situation. Ah, so he hit Brown on the way past, uh, as Brown hit Bird. Did one of them go back yes. into... Ah, yes, there was a domino effect, and that's pretty serious damage for Booston, who then almost can't see where he's going. The bonnet wants to come off, if that's what you can even call that, the front Cover. piece, I suppose, and goes way too fast, considering he's got damage. Has to lock on the brakes so that he doesn't miss pit entry entirely. Then reverse into pit lane, so no doubt that he did have damage, as did Jamie Bird, who's come in to retire it, uh, or, or, or repair it, excuse me. Meanwhile, Simon Edwards gets through on Seth Brown, and here goes James Barry as well. He knows the importance of this situation. He can't afford to let Edwards get too far up the road, because otherwise Barry will have no hope of beating him in this race. No, he's got to try and get past Brown. Brown's not going to be easy. Paul LeMay's just made it past Paul Clark there. So Barry now is all on how he's going to deal with the wonderful green machine that is Seth Brown. So let's see how he goes. Oh, Seth's going to help oh, that's him. It. There you go. Jobs are good. Un. James Barry will be through. It was all up on the curb there at Hell Corner, I'm afraid, for Seth Brown, who now drops back to fourth position. I'm afraid to say, over the top of the hill they go, and Barry will be at the road, you would have thought. Side by side, further back between Crabbe and Clark into turn two, and Paul Crabbe prevails in that one. He's up at seven places so far today. He's really on the move. We talk all you want about Simon Edwards moving up eight positions, and James Barry up six, but uh, we've got Paul Crabbe also moving on up, and might well be the biggest mover forwards at the end of this race. Yeah, maybe. So we're going to keep an eye and see how they go. Crab's up seven at the moment. He's got LeMay fighting it out with Seth Brown. And then you've got James Barry and Simon Edwards there. How far, How much further can Barry and Edwards get? Can Barry get Edwards? That's going to be the question. And can Paul LeMay clear what is the immovable object or seems to be the immovable object of Seth Brown? Well, I think it's uh, slightly less immovable than Paul Clark, to be honest. And there's a mistake, actually, through Forrest Obo, although a late apex might actually help him here. And Paul Crabb will be the one who's very close because he's right on the back here of Paul LeMay. Look at him here. He's got choice of where to go, although decides not to go for it because the sit stream will be so powerful for LeMay that it's almost pointless for the two-time champion to have a go here. They'll both be careering into Seth Brown here. That's a late move to the inside at the chase, but he's made it work here. Has LeMay, can he pull it up in time? The answer is yes, just about. Wow, that was impressive. Oh. And off the road goes Crabbe as he tries to make places as well. Here goes Clark nearly off the road and he goes through as Seth Brown responds. Down the inside at the final corner, he can't do it in a moment of madness between these four. Whoa, they're not letting up, are they? There's no love lost here. Paul Clark, Paul Crab, Seth Brown, Paul LeMay putting on the show the three pools and the Seth going at it here. It's Triple P versus a Seth Brown in the middle. And let's see if Crab can make this three wide, maybe. He's almost got nowhere to go here. Uh, don't really know where he's going to go here on this one as uh, Brown is on the inside of Clark now. And no, he's broken too late there as uh, Brown. So Clark will have no chance of going through. We'll have to stay in at sixth position as he is at the moment. But I wonder, though, whether with all this fighting going on back here, whether we've already seen our top three confirmed if you like for this race John McCutson has more than five seconds just a third of the way into this race a lot of that was created in traffic of course but does Simon Edwards have enough time left to catch that sort of margin no it, it, they, he's just not pulling out enough. 158.25 last time for John McCutcheon, some fastest lap of the race. 158.58 for Simon Edwards. Um, McCutcheon, some three taps quicker. He's got 5.1 seconds. He has only got seven laps. Three taps times seven, 2.1 seconds. He'll still be three seconds short by the time he comes into the end. So I don't think 
unless McCutcheon makes a royal mistake that Simon Edwards is going to get any further. It's possible around here, of course, but you know, but unfortunately for Edwards, that is not going to be enough for the moment. I think he's doing enough to hold off James Barry, though, who is going to gain quite considerable points over today, at least seven by the looks of it at the moment. Here goes Paul Crabb down the inside of Paul Clark, and uh, Clark's going to stay on the inside here quite well in the chase, and continue to hold back the multi-time champion of this series. This is proving tricky for Crab as he goes down the inside now. Leg breaks a little bit later and again can't find his way through. So Clark will stay ahead. Will he here into turn one? Well, no, Crab's still alongside it. He has broken a bit later and he has now gone through. So uh, Paul Clark has to out to the inevitable there almost and will now pull to the outside almost as if to suggest no I'm not going to try and make any more moves here he might as well took back into line again it Paul Crab, but he's not going to do that now you can see the extra straight line of speed for Crab. he will finally confirm sixth place although he's given himself a few seconds worth of catching to do before he can get to anyone else yeah he, he has Phil Jocelyn and Phil Glover are going on right a little on digger back down here they're all the way down in ninth and tenth they've just gone through quarry coming into the cutting phil obviously in the top 10 so there we go why obviously we saw what happened to mike Buson. he's still trying to come back through the field um, but phil glover mm, not been an ideal way not been an ideal day to be honest but what can you do Austin finished in the top 10 in the first race and was on pole. Don't forget to start this race. I think by the looks of this, Justin has got quite a bit more speed than Phil Glover. I, I did chat to Phil actually earlier on and he said that if we want to have a chat with him mid-race today, then there's a long enough straight to do so. So I'm thinking this is a good opportunity to do it because there's no other battles going on, including this one. So I'm going to grab him after he's done Forest Over here. Because I don't want to send him off the road. Oh, <laughs> I nearly did not there because he nearly crashed. But uh, <laughs> we will now. Uh, we'll uh, welcome in him. Phil, welcome into the booth mid-race for the first time in ages. How are you getting on out there today? Um, I'm, I'm sorry if you're talking to me. For some reason, you're coming out my other speakers and I can't hear you. But yeah, if uh, I'm just trying to squeeze all 425 horses out of this, but it's not, uh, it's not responding very well to me. <laughs> As you can see, it's Phil. Jocelyn's just passed me. All right, we'll, uh, we'll chat to Phil at the end of the race because, uh, as I say, we can't hear... <laughs> he can't hear us, indeed, uh, particularly well. But thanks very much, Phil, if you can hear me. And uh, we will speak to you again at the end of the race um, and the post-race interviews that come with that, of course. Um, <laughs> he, he did tell me he, he was going to have chat mid-race, but, uh, but there we go. Um, it's got speakers on and we're not in... <laughs> No. Not in the, we're not coming out the right place, clearly. No, but then um, that cool. happens, so doesn't they, it? It happens as well, because we know the wonderful world of Windows, and we know the wonderful world of Discord, and we know outputs change randomly. Um, you know, we've all been there. So I can understand why Phil wouldn't have noticed that that had changed, to be blatantly honest. Cars are a little bit spread out now. We're kind of relying on somebody to make a doo-doo. Mike Boosen's back into the pits. He's just drove in, so there's no real dramas with him, obviously, bar the fact that the drama that he did have there so yeah they're all a little bit spread Edward's not closing down on McCutcheon and in fact he's losing time 5.5 Barry again not closing down on Simon Edwards 158.61 for him 158.58 they're very stale Paul LeMay guess what 159.09 so he's four temps slower and then we've got Seth Brown who's six temps slower on a 159.6 last time out so nobody's really changing positions at the moment they are just as they are running off the laps with five to go i think the prospective battles in the future have got to be between the likes of paul crab and those ahead of him i think he's still got a bit of speed to give here in this race there he's about a second and a half behind seth brown although he's not slow himself and damien chi was catching paul clark not so long ago but he did just lose a bit of time on the run down the hill at the mountain was really closing into 1.1 seconds at its closest margin but that's just extended out slightly to 1.3 1.4 now so that's a prospective battle to have a look at maybe there goes crab half a second gained on seth brown he looks like he might want the top five here the two-time champion yeah he's gonna have a go uh, like that he's got four laps to go uh, let's see what goes on remember he's spoken about damien g 
here tonight. He's just been a little bit going about his business, but he's picking up onto the draft of Paul Clark. They are changing. Um, Glee is catch. Uh, G is catching there, not by a massive amount, mind you, but he is slowly wheeling him in. 1.1. If he gets within a second on coming onto that convoy straight, that's going to probably pull him in within about three or four attempts. But by the looks of it. He's catching Paul Clark, but we don't know if Clark's got damage from, obviously, the incident he had. Yeah, I'm not sure if he would do. I, I wouldn't expect so, actually. But, uh, but there we go. That might help G. Uh, Cram is getting a lot closer to Brown, though. That rate uh, of catching is a lot quicker for the Irishman, as Seth Brown looks to be denied a top five, very possibly, here tonight for the first time in feature racing, anyway in 2024 season two, which we are of course in. It does have a few penalty points to his name, unfortunately this season, but still I've not seen any stewards decisions since the Road Atlanta race, which is a very long time ago now, round three. That was, uh, say a very long time ago, it's three weeks, but uh, time is uh, not flying. No, so, it, it that is but, a very uh, long time ago in, in our world, mate, because me and you do so well, much each week, we, we forget what half the time's going on. So three weeks yeah, is a long old time. What day it is. Yes, oh, and, that kind of thing. Yeah, and they merge into one, don't they? You know, you do find that all yeah, of a sudden exactly. you think it's Monday, and before you know it, it's Wednesday. So, you know. <laughs> Mate, we're, we're, we can't, we're not saying anything that we haven't all been there for. That's the difference, isn't it? But Crab is catching Brown now. Crab's just pulled out a chunk of time. Yeah, and it's another... Well, it's a second that time. The rate of catching was at half a second one lap ago. Brown is not going any slower, but Crab is going a lot quicker. Look at those times there. The others are probably uh, battle-induced, especially the ones over two minutes, but he's been in the mid at 59s, even low and quicker than that indeed but Crab has been quicker and here he goes down to the outside now he's going to find it difficult at turn two and Seth Brown plays on that a little bit by sending Ooh. it into the turn and so Crab may well have to follow him over the top of the mountain yeah good. do you see Brad Brown come into turn one though he was out out against the wall he was on that raised curb on the outside and he's got to be careful because that curb can really bite you in the bottom so he's got to be a little bit careful as Seth Brown oh he's at the wall oh. Oh, man, just as we say to be careful, he goes and smacks the wall on the right-hand side. Now in through the skyline here. This is the... Look how fast he is going in. Blimey, yeah. Seth. He's got some stones on him this evening. It's uh, very quick indeed. I don't think that graze on the wall, by the way, will have done any damage. It, you've got to hit the wall pretty hard on iRacing to do damage sometimes, especially when it's a square side-on impact like that one. And so... I think Seth Brown will be okay, but whether he's going to be able to hang on to the position ahead of Paul Crabb is a very different issue indeed. Up over the top of the hill, the rise, the crest of the hill of Comrade straight now and down now into the chase. It's going to be over speed for Crabb. Oh, he's squeezed, but he makes some space. Now down to the inside and he can't get through. Brown squeezes him nicely through the apex there of the chase and now here goes Crabb uh, on the way towards the final corner now brown goes defensive and he breaks earlier this is where crab can make a difference although no side to side contact they both run deep oh. brown goes defensive again <laughs> crab's going to be getting a little bit maybe not annoyed by this but he's certainly gonna have to figure this one out as he tries to work his way through that was late moving under breaking i think but he's gonna wait for him anyway crab makes contact with seth brown who is into the wall at turn one yeah that there was some shift at the Shifty moving going on by Seth there. He comes over, so this is should give Crab the inside, but yeah, that's, yeah, that's moving under okay. breaking. That is not okay. Yeah. Um, and I wouldn't have done that if I was Seth uh, Paul, to be honest, um, because well, just because. Uh, but yeah, this this was not that, not good. The first one's fine. That that first move is there. fine. It, it's it's quite. It, it does look like a block, but it is fine. It's when he moves back to the race, uh, and he's allowed to move back to the racing line indeed as well. He's absolutely fine with that. It's the moving under the braking for turn one that's not okay. And that's sent him into the wall. Crab's done a very courteous thing in waiting for him, actually. I, I agree. I don't think he should have done that. No. It, it, well, maybe morally he felt it was the right thing to do, but... I, I, he was by no means required by the gentleman's agreement, if you like, to give that position back at all. He just did a very 
overly nice thing, actually. And now he's going to have to retrace his steps and try and make this move all over again, this time for seventh place. Yeah, you can imagine. <laughs> you can imagine if that was an official. Do you reckon they would have waited? Not on your life. You would have been off and probably on the voice chat of some person there calling you all sorts for that because he, he was in the breaking zone and you cannot move the car like that. And But Paul being Paul and as nice as Paul is, he's going to go back and do it all again. Here we go through for Crab. Maybe that's done a bit of damage to Seth Brown's car, but that was a lot easier for uh, Paul Crab, and that is uh, easier again. Off goes Seth Brown. He's going to struggle to hang on ahead of Phil Jocelyn now, I think in the eighth position because the pole sitter for this race is on a good road of recovery here from right at the back of the field up to ninth position and maybe eighth there as we go on to the penultimate lap of this race what's the lap time here for uh, justin a two minute point four obviously that's going to be a lot quicker than brown who was recovering there but just noticed he hit the wall with the front of his car as he went off to the right hand side there at turn one i think that's done a bit of damage because Certainly from the onboards of Crab, it seemed to me that Seth Brown was a bit slow in a straight line, but more notably, his front end was crumpled a bit by looks to me. Mm. But I think, I don't really know, obviously, what Seth was ideally thinking at that moment. You know, we can see Jocelyn's physically quicker. He's just pulled in a chunk of time of him going up the mountain straight into the quarries and through the cutting. And I, and I think Phil should get him. I think he's going to either get him going down the Conrad this time around. Uh, Seth does look very quick up through this section, though, and, and it doesn't look like he's carrying a lot of damage. Paul, on the other hand, obviously, as we've seen with his car, who went into the back of Seth, he's probably is part possibly carrying damage but at the moment he seems to be surviving yeah not it doesn't, does, does, it doesn't look visually on there so maybe that splitter hit the tire and he might have a few little bits of tire marks on it but that's about it but yeah here comes jocelyn now yes i i, I certainly believe seth brown does uh, i'm not so sure about crab actually but seth brown certainly does and in, and in any case crab showed himself to be a bit quicker in the lead up to that battle you see on the front right as we're looking at it, front left of the car the splitter is slightly raised although it's not level right across the board though it's a bit of a, a modernist car i guess you could say and modernist. it means that the <laughs> i don't know what that means i just said it oh i don't know is it a word yeah it's definitely a word yeah oh, okay but <laughs> But, uh, but I don't really know what it means, I just used it. It's, it's the splitter <laughs> that's just slightly raised a little bit. Yeah, on the right-hand side. slightly jagged splitter, yeah, on the, on the front left-hand side. Don't know how much damage or, or worth that's m much making, really, but two tenths of a second game by Justin here. He's going to have to do it all on the last lap, though. Yeah, he's going to have to go for it. He's going to make a decision, right? He's either going to go for it down the mountain straight or he's going to go for it down the Conrad straight. That's it. You know, and there's, there's, yay, yay, yay. That's, that's his choices. Um, but John McCutcheon wiggling his way through the dipper for the final time before he goes into Forest Elbow for the final time. And it should be John McCutcheon wrapping this one up. Should be, but it will be Simon Edwards with the most points on the day. 60 currently projected for him and a seven point gain on James Barry, which you'll be very pleased with. But with those, uh, poor opening rounds and the opening half to the season which we've almost now completed he will not be anywhere near the championship lead i don't think uh, might be fourth maybe ahead of maxwell now actually he's had a difficult last few weeks however uh, he will not be championship leader that's for sure that will remain james barry as john mccutcheson struggles in the first race continues to hold him back here this season He's never won a feature race in the season two of 2024, but he's about to break that now. Out of the final corner for the three-time champion, and it's John McCutcheon who wins at Bathurst. A comfortable margin in the end as he took the lead early on, and he didn't need to do much defending throughout the course of his leadership. It is six and a half seconds back to Simon Edwards, and Damien G will be hoping that this race goes on for one or two laps longer. He just catches Paul Clark for a top five here, but anything going wrong he will not finish there and same goes for phil johnson who's mm. right behind seth brown on the way in towards the final corner for eighth position johnson will be hoping there could have been a 
extra couple of laps in that one too, but neither of them are able to make their passes into the final turn and finish sixth and ninth, respectively. Yeah, I really thought Jocelyn might have got him, but maybe he just didn't get the speed. Seth did look rapid through that middle, that mountain section, I've got to be honest, and it was always going to be tough for, um, for Phil to get hold of him, but he, he clearly didn't. If you lose six temps going out, coming out through the mountain section, then you go onto Forest Elbow expecting to pull it back. The draft is strong, but it ain't quite that strong. Um, as Jamie Bird comes over the line to be the last of the finishers there. Particularly uh, for Jamie Bird there, finishing-wise, of course, the length place as he goes over the line. It's John Cutson, though, who wins the feature race. Uh, feature race winner for the first time this season, in fact. 6.5 seconds at the end ahead of uh, Simon Edwards, six-time champion. James Barry will retain the championship lead with another podium with Paul LeMay and Paul Clark rounding up the top five. Jimmy G couldn't quite get there. Paul Crabb finished seventh then of Seth Brown, who just held on ahead of Phil Jocelyn. Phil Glover rounded out the top ten with Jamie Bird, last driver on the lead lap. Mike Boosom retired after his crash. James Graham Brown did as well, with James Chapman not starting that second race, unfortunately, tonight. So that is it for... We've seen 21 laps of racing, if my maths is correct. Um, it's not. <laughs> no, 19. Good. <laughs> But 19 laps of racing here at Bathurst tonight. It's been uh, good to return to the most well-used circuit, I guess you can say, in the Radical Race Series' history. Uh, I'm just... Well, normally at this point, Phil Glover's the only one in the waiting room, but uh, I'd bring him straight in, but I'm <laughs> not sure he's sorted his uh, speaker problems, so I'm slightly uh, scared of uh, bring him. not being able to hear me, but I'll do it now because uh, yeah. he is there waiting for us, as always. And we'll leave him to last, so we'll uh, bring him up and... Uh, chat to him first. Phil, I hope that you can hear us a bit better now. Um, thanks very much for giving us an update mid-race, by the way, despite the fact you couldn't hear what we were talking to you about, um, if, you can, uh, if you can hear us again now. But, uh, but that, thanks very much for that. How did you find your uh, time at Bathurst here this evening? And uh, how were the two races? A lot of clicking going Hi, on. Got, oh, hello. I'm hoping you're not talking to me because if you are, you're coming out under my feet. <laughs> okay, okay, nice. we'll, uh, we'll we'll leave Phil to till the end again to uh, to get himself sorted out. Um, it's uh, hmm. slight, slight problems for uh, Phil Glover today, but uh, we'll we'll chat to him at the end as always. While we're waiting for the others to uh, come in, though, it's been uh, good to get Bath get Bathurst again. And to be honest, uh, it's it's sometimes difficult to uh, know where to place this circuit. I find it sometimes difficult to overtake on in these cars, actually, but uh, nothing like that here tonight. There was uh, plenty of action out there on the circuit. There certainly was for John Cutson as well, who is the race two winner, and he can chat to us now as well. Uh, welcome in, John. Good to have you with us, uh, and congratulations on the second race victory. What were your aims after the opening race of the evening here tonight? Did you have confidence that you were going to win that second race? Aye, no problem. Made a mess in the first race. And I had to pay in the yeah, first race. Oh, everything that could go wrong did go wrong. You know, I, I break myself in the straight and then I get caught up behind Paul Lamy and cook the tyres and uh, made a royal of it, if you like. It was, it's good to get up there in race two uh, as well, I suppose. And it, what was, I, I guess there was no worry that Simon Edwards was going to catch you there either. You were quite well matched in qualifying and you had quite a big margin when he got through into second place. So was there any concern about that? Like I say, no, I had the pace. I knew I had good pace tonight. Uh, just I knew I could lap 52s, uh, 58 threes consistently. So it had to be... Once it got ahead, you know, it had been too far back to catch. Very tricky too, uh, of course. What's your plan for the rest of the season? You've done all right in the championship so far and you will have uh, maybe broken evens with James Barry today, I think, roundabouts. You might have gained a point or two uh, or he might have one or two, but not nothing much has changed. Should be around 20 points back or so. Uh, what's your plan for the rest of the season? How much are we going to be seeing? Are you, are, are you realistic about your championship charge this season? That should be good to make the rest of the races, I think. Uh... I'll just do what I do and hopefully work works out the best. Just the run of bad luck the last two or three races. It happens to everyone, so it'll happen to the other guys as well, I'm sure. Just yeah. see what happens at the end of the season. 
Certainly, we uh, certainly will. Anyone you'd like to give a shout out to before we let you go? A shout out to Simon because that was a phenomenal qualifying lap he did. You know, it was really fast, so well done to him. I think it was so quick, even he couldn't beat it, actually. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, there you go. Um, congratulations on the win here tonight in race two, John, and uh, thanks for chatting to us as well. Thanks, Ewan. Thanks very much, John McCutson there, the second race winner, just ahead of Simon Edwards, who won the first race and takes the day's maximum points, at, well, not the maximum points, but the most out of anybody, at 60 points. Congratulations on that, Simon, and a, a victory to go with it as well. Uh, how did you find your evening at Bathurst? Because John was uh, complimenting you there on your qualifying lap, for example. Uh, where did you pull that one out from? Uh, I can't tell you where I pulled it out from. Um, the, the I, I don't know. I'm having a, an off day, so I just... Uh, uh, Somehow that came that popped out. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, but my race pace was as rubbish as I was expecting. I just didn't, I just didn't, I couldn't do it today. But uh, to pull out a first and a second out of not being able to drive too well um, is, a, is a really good result, really. I mean, it's been a, a great points haul for you here at Bathurst. Is it something about this circuit that you've really gotten used to? Because it is the circuit we visited most in this series, after all. Yeah, I know it from more from other cars. So we we ran it a lot in the Skip Barber series. I've run a few V8s round here, stuff like that. Uh, so I know just about every inch of this circuit. So even if it might have been an off day, I know robotically where to put the car. So um, so uh, it, that worked out. Certainly, the muscle memory's still there, at least. You're obviously a long way behind in the championship as things stand because the fact you've not been at very many races so far, but that will start to sort of equalise now as we're at the halfway point in the season. Everyone starts to take those into account properly and we get into the running at the second half of the season. Are you still realistic about retaining your title again here or is it a bit of a sort of middle season before you go again next time? Yeah, it'll, be a, it'll just be a season of trying to get some wins. Um, and uh, and then go for it again next season because I think it's going to be between John and uh, James, I think, isn't it? Well, they're certainly top two at the moment, but you never know. Still six rounds to go. Uh, is there anyone you'd like to give a shout out to before we let you go? Um, I'll give a shout out to that corner that, <laughs> that John missed. <laughs> I thought he was going to get past me and just drive away. Uh, it catches me out like that as well when I'm trying to overtake. Um, so I'm giving it to a corner. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, well, it's, I mean, if it's <laughs> if you if it's worth it, then fine. Uh, that's uh, that's fine. C congratulations, Simon, on race one victory, sixty points tonight as well, and uh, thanks for chatting to us. Yeah, thank you. Thanks very much, Simon. It was uh, the race one winner tonight, and now hopefully we can chat to Phil Glover as long as we're not coming out through his feet somewhere. Um, <laughs> We can, yeah. uh, he, he can hear I can hear you now. Yeah, that, it was I'm, a bit. I'm um, yeah, I'm sorry about that. Uh, Windows did an update uh, earlier uh, on I told the you. week, I think. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so I don't actually know how tall you are, Ewan, but you're right under my feet. <laughs> and oh, well. I could feel you, but I couldn't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> not sure that's a good thing. <laughs> no, not, <laughs> but, uh, not no, playing yeah. with his feet. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, as James said, the place he, I'd he, want to be on a sweaty day, but there you go. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> as James said, uh, suspected it was a Windows update. These things uh, do happen to all of us, including us. So, uh, so yeah. there you go. Um, there we go. It's good to have you with us. Though. Thanks for, for your update mid-race, by the way. I know you <laughs> couldn't hear what we said to you, but uh, but it was good to get your thoughts sure halfway through good. the race. <laughs> Um, so, uh, so thanks very much for that. How did you find your, your time at Bathurst here today and uh, second race, especially when you got into the top 10? Yeah, but to be fair, there weren't that many people in it, were there? <laughs> there were about 13, so I'm not sure top 10's fantastic, but I, I suppose I'll take it. Um, well, S Simon did a setup and I tried it and I couldn't get on with it really. It was uh, for what we used the same one from Watk Watkins Glen. Um, so I went back to the one we used the previous season, and I, I don't know. I think um, things have moved on quite a bit since then. I think it had it was a medium downforce setting as well. So um, I was using all the 425 horsepower punch through the through the wind. So hey ho. 
Yeah, it's uh, it, it's always one of those talking points, isn't it? In motorsports, well, motorsport a little bit, but sim racing especially is uh, the setup. Just how much difference does it make t- to you when you're sort of trying different setups? Is it, is it one of those minor things when you're really tweaking at the end of just before a race, or is it you know one of the really major things that is sort of make or break as to whether you can drive the car or not? It can be. I think this track's got a mixture of everything, and it? it's got a lot of uphills. So, you know, you need you, your gear ratios need to be um, pretty well matched for it. Um, brake bias as well. You've got some downhill braking sections, uh, although that puts a bit more weight on the front. But equally, you've got gravity working against you. Um, so those kind of things, uh, I mean, I leave it largely to Simon to come up with a, a reasonable setting. Um, I think when I first started driving, I obviously needed to get more used to how Simon sets his cars up, whereas I've been using them quite a while now. So I'm, I, I kind of understand a little bit where he's coming from with the, the settings. But I think that, you, do you remember a few years ago, there was a real big difference between high downforce and low downforce, and Simon was yeah. virtually able to run a zero wing. Now things have changed, and I think the differential between, um, uh, you know, that higher downforce uh, and less so, um, you, you tend to find people running more similar wing settings. Um, so... Yeah, but I, I don't get into all the damper side and, and stuff. Um, no, I never did as a driver either. It's all too complicated for me, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it, it's a world I'll stay away from. Is there anyone you'd like to go shout out to before we let you go, Phil? Well, actually, I'll, I'll give a bit of a shout out to something different. I've been doing a lot of Richard Burns Rally, which is fantastic nice. nowadays, if anybody's not had a go at it. And uh, for once, I, 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 I'm sort of probably in the top five percent at the moment maybe ten percent of people that that do that so what i'd really say is a great call out to the people that are currently still modding richard burns rally to keep it up to date it is absolutely fantastic so if anybody who's listening here fancies a go at uh, rallying i'd certainly uh, encourage people to give that a go and the big bonus is it's free to download absolutely yeah fantastic uh so thanks for for Going to chat to us again and for, for the recommendation, I suppose, uh, to uh, to go and have a go. Uh, we look forward to seeing you next week. Yeah, absolutely. Where, where are we next week? Yeah, to Lagos, if you're a fan. I'll reserve judgment on that one. <laughs> uh, get I out! I believe how many people dislike. Inter-Lagos. I love Into Lagos. Uh, Jesus. Yeah. I used to uh, like you, uh, Phil Glover. I used to like you. Well, you you did. I remember one race you got really carried away. Was that Road, <laughs> that Road Atlanta? Wasn't no Road America. We haven't done that one. Are we doing that one this year? Uh, I think America? we might be. Yeah, yeah it's the Ooh, final okay. race this season. I, I'll save everything up for that one for Jack. For, yeah. for hey, you were in where was, I think it was out in the front one. If I remember correctly, I wouldn't have got excited for any other reason. He must have I don't think I was out in the front. I think, I, it was I think you tense. had a reverse grid pole, Phil. It was quite embarrassing. I, I played it to my mum and she said, he's, he's a bit of a fanboy, isn't he? <laughs> hey, look, I can't help it, Phil. Mothers love me. It's not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, and, and you do lo- love an underdog, don't you? Uh, always. Always love an underdog, buddy. I, I, I try to maintain that uh, status as much as I can. Okay, mate. Yeah, there, there you go. We, we look forward to seeing I'll it at Road America, on, especially. Guys. Yeah. We get there in six weeks' time. Thanks for it, Phil. We'll see you next week. Yeah, take care, bud. Bye. Thanks very much. Phil Glover there chatting to us at the end of tonight's racing at Bathurst. Bit of a preview as to what's to come at the end of May when we finish out this season. But that's still a long way away because we've only just completed the first half of the season. It's been a good first half of the season, I think it's fair to say, James, but it's very much hanging in the balance and a great end to another season is surely on the way here in the Radical Race Series. Oh, let's be real, Mr O'Leary. We always have great series here in the Radical Race Series series unfortunately um it, we always have great racing every season i don't think this season is going to be any different i think it's still going to be great great racing so let's bring it on let's get it done awesome job from all of these guys
Let's uh, hope for a, a great ending to the season as we so often see. Thanks very much to everyone who's been tuned in here tonight. It's been the Radical Race Series. You can catch us every night here on, on a Thursday around 9pm in the UK. So uh, make sure you uh, come back again for more similar great racing. I've been Ian Leary, James Parfit alongside me. And until we see you in one week's time over on the other side of the world in Brazil for Interlagos, it's goodbye for now.